Joe Biden, he comes out and makes the announcement on Wednesday that if a doctor tells him that there is a medical reason why he should not continue to seek re-election, he will step down. Two hours later, <laughs> he comes out and tells everybody he's got COVID. Kelly, what updates do you have on the health and the current campaign efforts of our current president, Joe Biden? So I would like to show everyone uh, what we've been referencing. Um, but I first like to say uh, that I feel so bad for Biden. I think he's been betrayed by his party. And I, I think the Democrats are shameful. They knew what was going on with him. They still elected him as their nomination for uh, their party. They still let him do that debate, and they could have carried on the charade of, oh, he's he's fine, even though we're seeing all these videos of, of, of his mental health failing. Uh, they still put him up there, and now... At the last moment, we're 109 days away, or 108 days, 108 days away from our election day. And they're now going to throw something else in the mix. It's so shameful. So this is the video that came out on Wednesday. Uh, go ahead and play this video, Jake. If I had some medical condition that emerged, if somebody, if the doctors came to me and said, you got this problem, that problem. But I made a serious mistake. In the, in, the, in the whole debate. And uh, and look, when I originally ran, you may remember it, I said I was going to be a transitional candidate. Transitional and I thought candidate. that I'd be able to move from this, just pass it on to someone else. But I didn't anticipate things getting so, so, so divided. And quite frankly, I think the only thing age brings is a little bit of wisdom. And I think I've demonstrated that I know how to get things done <laughs> for the country in spite of the fact that we're told we couldn't get it done but there's more to do and i'm reluctant to walk away from it. how dare so, you think there's something wrong with him he just has a speech impediment he's always had a speech he's impediment. not Guys, always that had a was speech jet impediment. lag that was jet lag and cold. none of you are global jet setters <laughs> like the president that is jet lag from over a month ago when he toured the world yep how dare all of you you guys are insensitive bigots so that's my point. So he was very adamant when he came, when they all started turning on him. He was very adamant saying, you know, God is the only one that could take me out of out of this <laughs> position. And now his language is starting to change. So that was Wednesday morning. The, that, that interview came out from... B Before we move on, why do you guys think that language has changed? Well, because you say he said God's the only one who could take he him out. He said it right there. Yeah, no, I know. But the powers that be think that they're God and the same powers that got him into the White House are now against him. And that's the invisible force that we see with things like, you know, Trump getting shot at or shot, um, Trump getting all these attacks against him. Basically, anything that these uh, entities, powers that be want, they make it happen or put as much energy as possible into making it happen. And they have immense resources that we can't even comprehend. So, so that's what's against him right now. So I don't disagree with you. I, In my opinion, what happens here is that he refused. It's a weird play because we talked. Why would you waste a candidate? Trump is going to win. I, and I hate to be that I'm not I didn't vote again I always like to preface this I didn't vote for him in 2020 I voted for the guy with dementia by accident didn't know fell victim to propaganda that being said after what took place last Saturday Donald Trump could go sit in Mar-a-Lago in a secure bunker which he where should. no one which he should I 100% agree and he'll still win that campaign he does not need to campaign anymore the election is over Joe Biden is done Trump is going to win so the question becomes okay why would they now if there are people pushing him from behind the scenes and here's what I think happened I think they've kept him protected and now all of a sudden they go okay you're not stepping down we need you to which I don't understand you know that this election election is over unless they get michelle obama to come out and run that's the only way that trump loses he, I, that's the only play they, they have don't want i think they're relinquish power for i think they years. still agree, they, they think they're still going to be able to kill okay. him so then here here's what they do then they come out and they go okay we need you to step down you're not going to step down we've protected you this long here's what's going to happen if you don't step down here is you know hunter left how many biden or how many laptops here's laptops here's diaries oh. here's financial records you want to go spend the last years you have of life in a prison no then say you're going to step down we'll come out and we'll say hey it turns out he does have parkinson's that's why he's met with these doctors now you step aside say for the betterment of the country i have to step aside to take care of my own health but the real reason why he's doing that is to continue to protect 
Hunter, his crackhead son, and their illegal business dealing. I think and they the, showed they're willing to kill somebody now, so I think he didn't take them seriously, but now he saw they're willing to kill a president or a mm-hmm. former president, so I think he's taking them a lot seriously. And he looked rattled after Trump was shot at, because like, people claim that he had something to do with that. I don't even think he had something to do with that. I think that the same forces that went after Trump could potentially go after Biden. I, well, Biden. And I'll go to you, and then you, and then Humberto. I agree with you that I don't think he had anything to do with it, because I don't think he has anything to do with what's going on now. So there's no way that he would have anything to do with an assassination because he hasn't had anything to do with anything to do with anything for the past three years. Yeah, I, I think they're also sitting on the tapes of the her interview like a magic bullet, just waiting to like okay, a a special counsel sat down with Trump and uh, with with Biden and interviewed him for days on end and got it all on audio logs that they are now withholding. But I think they've also said, hey, if you keep going like you're going. We're going to drop these tapes and then there's not a damn thing you can do about it. You're going to have to sit down and face the music of everybody knowing that you have lost your mind and maybe also admitted to some criminal activity in the process. So deep state, deep state, deep state. <laughs> Kelly, why do you think Biden is offering to step down now if a medical condition comes up? Well, it's it's part of it's part of the narrative. He's now subbed in he's like okay what do, what do i have to do and i don't think he wants to do it anymore how would you feel if like your entire party betrayed you and everybody's doing your job for you and like you don't want to do it anymore he's and he's an older man whose mental health is declining he's probably like i don't want to go to sleep i don't want to eat my ice cream cone so um for sure this is the next step so uh he comes out with that that statement um he gets uh can we play this video real quick jake first before we do that She's not only a great vice president, she could be president of the United States. So before, do you hear, yeah, and do you hear them all kind of like booing too? They're not happy about that. So there's no way she would win against Trump. So they don't know what they're going to do. And I don't think he does either. So he was before, uh, do you remember the uh, Corrine Jean-Pierre interview where he was like, she's not ready yet to be vice president Trump, blah, blah, blah. And uh, because he called her Trump by accident, that interview. Yep. Now he all of a sudden this week he's saying she'd be a great president. They're trying to put her or someone else to be. They're trying to strengthen his thing or let him fall. Do you think scary people spoke to him? Scary people spoke to him. Biden. No, I feel like they're just telling him what to do. I think very okay. I think very uh, very loving people spoke to him because I think the scary people got to all the people who take care of him on a regular basis. Ah, because you're right. right. Because they go to Hunter. Instead of telling Joe, yeah. we're going to do this to Hunter, you go to <laughs> Hunter because you know now because Hunter was sitting in after the debate. What happened? Hunter flew to the White House and Hunter was sitting in on cabinet meetings with the president. So it, if your move there is to try and get Biden to step down, you don't go to Biden directly. You go to the person he trusts, mm-hmm. which is his son, and go, hey, listen, crackhead, you want to spend <laughs> the rest of your life in jail for being a crackhead? No. Then you got to convince your father. <laughs> you you, you get him to drop out, and maybe on his way out, we'll allow him to sign a pardon for you and a couple other people. I think they are working on Jill because she has all of her faculties and refuses to give up power. There's, She's basically there's committing no way. elder there's abuse no way. by making her husband do okay, this. There's Hold no on, way. everybody's waiting. Deep state, deep state, deep state. Somewhat deep state, <laughs> but uh, Humberto, why do you believe that Joe Biden is now out of nowhere after weeks of defending and saying, I'm not going anywhere, I'm steadfast, I am the candidate, including yesterday, there were reports that he told Hakeem Jeffries and Chuck Schumer, I ain't going anywhere. But then he also gives this press conference. Why do you think Joe Biden has all of a sudden done a 180 on being the Democratic candidate for 2024? It's out of his hands. <laughs> uh, the debate... Well, this was, I actually said this. This was part of the plan. First debate, health decline, drop, and uh, they paraded him everywhere. So, like, I mean, obviously, the guy that keeps his agenda, he did 18, by now, like 22, like, public appearances, weekend interviews, and it just got bad and worse and worse. So they built, you know, like, enough evidence for this to happen. Like, we saw it coming. I'm not surprised. 
And if I guess, probably by next show, he won't be there. Okay, so and that those are the reports coming into the weekend is that he will not survive. And I don't mean that in like a he's going to get assassinated. He's not going to survive the weekend as president. They will force him to step down. But Kelly, you have more here. So go ahead. I, know I have just a couple up. more things. So uh, right after that interview came out on Wednesday morning, this came out Wednesday afternoon. We can show this, Jeremy. So, yeah, he got tested positive for COVID. He has to cancel his speech in Las Vegas. Meanwhile, Trump just got shot six days ago on Saturday, and he is still campaigning against Brandon's direct orders. And we saw Joy Reid <laughs> from MSNBC slide. say that, uh, you know, if Biden Jake, recovers from COVID, it's just as good as uh, Trump. Yeah, if Biden gets over a, a cough, it's the same thing as Trump recovering from getting shot in the head. Which it is, could be at this point, but I don't think so. So then Joe goes on social media and makes a joke about it, which is, might be his staff, might be him. I'm sick <laughs> of Musk and blah, blah, blah. Vote, I donate to me. I highly doubt he even knows what Twitter is. Right? I'm sure that he knows that it exists. I doubt that Joe Biden in his entire adult life has ever sent a tweet. So hmm. then the last thing is... This came out yesterday on Thursday. Obama tells allies Biden's path to winning re-election has greatly diminished. So now it was all over the news yesterday about what you were just saying that Biden's not going to survive the week. So here's my conspiracy theory. The Democrats planned this from the beginning. They picked Joe Biden knowing his mental state. They put him up in that debate so that it could be revealed officially to the world and the media could get on board that he's losing his marbles en enough, not a lot, but enough that it's the fact that he can't run the country. So now they knew that nobody could go, nobody was going to win against Trump in early polling, whatever, whatever. Trump was going to make it. Now, they want to throw in this wrench, confuse the American people, run a whole campaign with a Michelle Obama. How amazing, like what kind of story that would be to go against this. They planned this from the beginning when they nominated him because they knew of his condition. And now this is just part of the story about getting him out. Well, they do about the money, though, that they can't give to anybody except Kamala. I think it's like two hundred fifty million. Kamala gets the person that they want, so whoever it is that they want is her VP. So it's Kamala and then Michelle Obama, There's who's no going to be the next two wins. eight yeah, two years. No. Exit, but they that they will but not. They're doing whatever they can. Indian. It's a last ditch effort. It's a dramatic effort. It's a story. Somebody's really oh. fucked up playing a, a game of cards. What's it called? Card of House houses. Of House of cards. cards. Unless the plan. <laughs> was to burn Kamala in the process. Because think about it. She dropped out of the Democratic primary in 2020 hmm. with less than 1% support. Nobody liked her. And Nobody she, likes not even, her not still. Even, not even Biden liked her. Because she basically said Biden was a racist who opposed busing. That, that little girl was me. Yeah, you just called Biden a racist segregationist. Whoever. But now she's vice president and they're stuck with her because they needed, you know, the, the, the perky black woman to allegedly yeah. black woman to take the spot but they don't like her either so okay if they don't care about money are they interested in just burning her against trump to get her out of the way to free it up for whoever they want next time around because they already know they're going to lose i don't think they're okay with letting trump get in the white house i think they're willing to do anything necessary because you know not only is he going to come down on him with like the wrath of the full power of the presidency but i think he's like he already changed and uh set back to uh, agenda 2021 to agenda 2030 like that's why that changed so and that's their biggest fear uh but come on they already lost the narrative they could literally have a, I don't know, a ticket with Oprah and Michelle Obama endorsed by, I don't know, everyone, you yeah, know. a double black woman ticket. But you, you, they, they, they lost the narrative. Like the Trump, you know, proposition of value to the American public with inflation, with the attacks, you know, th there's no one that can get in there and turn things around. But Brandon, you're also right. You know, they will do everything in their power for Trump to get to. Nothing's to not off the it. table. Their Bible Nothing is, is a book the called The Prince, and it says all ends justify the means. So literally anything possible is dirty, vile as you could imagine, like nuclear uh, uh, nuclear waste incident happen or, you know, blow things up, poison the water supply. Who the hell, Like nothing's off the table, I would imagine. I think Democrats knew what they were doing. They're doing every last ditch effort they can with the Trump assassination, with Whatever they're doing now with, oh, no, Biden's sick. Oh, no, he can't continue. Kamala, who do you, whatever. It's all it's all a game. And I feel angry mm -hmm. 
because now even if I didn't want to vote for Trump, I don't have a choice, you know? Yeah. And I think it's shameful and irresponsible and the Democratic Party needs to do better. Well, they're they're the vehicle for globalism. Though. That's the thing. Like people, you know, have to look at the globalism agenda as like part of the Democrat Party. They have no agenda because they have no figurehead. The figurehead they nominated is sick. Yeah. And still the nomination. Well, the, right. the figurehead so, they wanted was president for two consecutive terms from 2008 to 2016. They didn't really have a plan after that. They, they, they've been scrambling put another for somebody puppet up there ever since Hillary. Likes. And, well, and maybe Hillary. that's who makes the return is in 2024. Yeah. We have a rematch of 2000. I can't believe we haven't heard from her. Oh. Back for revenge. Oh, God. I can't believe we haven't heard from her since the assassination attempt. I was expecting her to come out with well, the normally, most passive aggressive. Normally, people yeah. who do and orchestrate assassinations then don't come out and speak. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Hillary had nothing to do with that, nor did she have anything to do with the 52 people that mysteriously died surrounding her.